Dear brothers and sisters, I want to share with you a pastoral message on our current ecclesial and social political climate regarding our Catholic efforts on behalf of comprehensive immigration reform. I'm aware of the deep complexity that surrounds this pastoral issue. I know, for example, that each one of us shares different views and sentiments, and I'm particularly sensitive to the array of emotions that often arise when we talk about our deepest convictions. At the same time, I want to provide a pastoral perspective that can help us navigate compassionately through this issue as a faith and a civil community, and do so in a manner that reflects the best of our Catholic gospel values. We're all proud of our archdiocese and the city that shares the same name, St. Louis. For almost 250 years, St. Louis welcomed immigrants from across the different continents and countries of the world. As a matter of fact, except for the Native American people among us, we are all immigrants. The challenge today, in the words of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, is to continue to welcome immigrants who join our ranks today. Immigrants who come to the United States, and particularly those who are undocumented, they are a very vulnerable population who need someone to speak on their behalf, defending their human rights and dignity. For us Catholics, this sensibility for the immigrant is close to our own identity as a pilgrim or immigrant church. Scripture speaks of the migration experience from Abraham who was sent out from his homeland in the Old Testament to the Holy Family who first fled Herod and lived their lives for a time as refugees in a foreign land. Indeed, our gospel and moral tradition calls on all people of faith and goodwill to stand up in defense of life and human dignity. It is a fundamental calling for us Catholics to build up the church in communion with hospitality. Our faith compels us to embrace one another as members of Christ's body. In St. Paul's words, here there is no Greek and Jew, slave or free, for Christ is all in all. In other words, we as Christians must be careful not to create arbitrary and false divisions that separate us from one another. The unity we find in Christ supersedes any earthly divisions that might be constructed, divisions by race or sex or nationality. Similarly, St. Matthew reminds us that our love for God and neighbor are not disjointed realities, but one fundamental love. You shall love the Lord your God with your whole heart, with your whole soul, and with your whole mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. For us, our neighbors also include the new immigrants in our parish communities and in our public squares. As peoples of faith, we must commit ourselves completely to God's justice and charity. This commitment, which comes to us as a grace, allows us to examine our relationships, our biases, and our loyalty to social and political structures with which we identify, particularly insofar as any of those commitments might cause division among us and our relationship with Almighty God. In other words, we must constantly reevaluate whether or not we are living out the gospel message or if our daily life is undermining our ability to do so. Simply put, in the context of conscientious and complex policy issues, such as migration, how do we approach this issue? And through what lens do we analyze the intricacies of the debate? When it comes to the immigrant, can we embrace him or her? As the gospel commandment says, love him as we love ourselves. How do we use our pastoral gifts, preaching, prayer, and Catholic social teachings and action to best serve the new immigrant? These coming days and weeks, we in the Archdiocese will have a number of opportunities to come together to pray and to learn more about our Catholic and Gospel mandate to walk with our immigrant sisters and brothers in the manner of Christ. In particular, I have designated the weekend of September 28th and 29th to be our Archdiocesan Immigration Sunday. Resources will be made available to our parish communities and leadership to aid in this pastoral initiative. May God continue to bless our journey together so that we may arrive closer to Christ who is all and in all.